welcome to the second lecture on the series on mineral uh, resources. In the first lecture, we uh, got an uh, introductory overview of mineral resources as to what they are, control of certain fundamental parameters on the availability of these mineral resources in terms of the quantity that they are available and uh, the occurrence of various mineral resources in the earth's crust. Uh, we saw that this uh, term resource is a qualitative term used to represent a total quantity of the mineral sources of different metals and minerals. So, the resource actually comprise of the individual mineral deposits of those metals as or minerals and they do occur in the earth's crust either exposed on the surface or at different depths going down to even up to 5 kilometers. Now, in this lecture let us try to get an overview of the distribution of these mineral deposits in space and time. Because uh, essentially space means we again uh, consider the repository of these mineral deposits that is the crust or more precisely the upper continental crust. In this the mineral resources of different uh, metals and minerals they occur. So, uh, so, we give a brief, a brief recapitulation that we discussed about the certain fundamental aspects and now let us move on to the distribution of mineral deposits in space and time. Now, before we uh, highlight or before we start discussing on the distribution of these mineral deposits in space. Space means it is again uh, we can recall that it is the earth's continental crust. So, it is the, the earth. So, before we go to the uh, distribution of these mineral deposits in space, let us first consider the earth because the domains in which these mineral resources are enriched to give us the mineral deposits are a result of the earth processes operating at different scales and those earth processes we fundamentally can classify in the context of mineral deposit formation. Of course, it is generally applicable to the uh, formation of different types of rocks uh, and uh, since mineral, de mineral deposits are an integral part and they occur in association with the common crustal rocks. So, they are also results of the broad processes operating inside the earth. So, we generally that is how we describe. So, when you come to the earth, so the earth is like a big machine or we call it as the earth system where the different components of the system they, uh, they operate uh, in, in a well orchestrated manner driven by the energy, the energy has to come from somewhere. So, we will we have decided we have divided the processes into two broad categories that is uh, the endogenic and the exogenic. So, the endogenic, so before coming to understand the endogenic process, let us first uh, let us recall that there are different uh, components of this earth system. This is the this is represented as the crust which I am representing in a very simplified manner and this is the mantle and the core. So, the average crustal depth is about 33 kilometers and so this is the core, 
the mantle. So we'll have to see that when we say that the endogenous process are essentially driven by the earth's own heat engine. So, where from this heat will come? If we begin with a originally homogeneous molten, ma molten earth, then it, it has evolved and is still evolving in the process of loss of heat and we know this core is essentially the metallic iron plus nickel. I am putting things in much simpler form. The mantle is silicate mainly of iron and magnesium and this is the crust constituted of the upper and the lower crust and sometimes. So, essentially the because of the difference in the thermal conductivity between the core and the mantle. So, additional heat energy always keeps accumulating on the cross mantle boundary and that periodically is given off in the form of uh, form of uh, plumes which are basically essentially pocket of heat energy which rises through the mantle and then melts the crust uh, at different uh, domains in continental as well as oceanic domain. And if we look at the diagram in a little more uh, process oriented manner, then we know that the Uh, because of this, uh, this, ma this mantle, the lower mantle is uh, the asthenospheric mantle, which is uh, in a rheological state, which is more liquid than solid, and there is convection uh, going on con continuously. These being the regions where the the convection cell upwell, and where they upwell they give rise to situations like this. So, these are essentially the zones of asthenospheric upwelling and where the regeneration of basaltic melt by melting of this uh, asthenospheric mantle and generation of the ocean for basalt. And these are the domains of the island arc where oceanic and a oceanic plate subducts against an oceanic plate. This domain is more is a is a continental arc where an oceanic plate subducts against a continental uh, lithospheric plate and this is the mid oceanic ridge. So, this is a 
broad framework of the tectonic of the of the activity which we can explain in terms of the earth's heat engine the work the earth's heat engine at work mainly driven by the convection cells in the asthenosphere and uh, so we will try to see or we will try to correlate the distributional the uh, the uh, the distribution of these mineral resources in space and uh, uh, in addition to that we are, as we have already stated that there are situations in which uh, the thermal plumes rise from the core mantle boundary and also cause melting at different domains in the continental and the oceanic crust giving rise to uh, volcanic uh, oceanic islands as well as the uh, mid continental magmatic activity which we will see them in greater details later. But uh, and the other process, so that is the process which is responsible mainly in uh, distribution of the mineral deposits because they do form rocks and mineral deposits are, speci are, are associated with the are integral part of the uh, cross forming process and are associated with the common rocks in the continental crust. So, they are also a result of this broad uh, activity which is driven by the earth's one heat engine. Only thing that that whether the scale at which we are uh, trying to understand this process, whether this scale is uh, the, the generation of the mineral deposits also happen in that scale or there are some local scale processes which are needed in addition to that we will be uh, looking at them in uh, due course of this lecture. So, the second uh, category of process which are the exogenic process. So, this endogenic process is essentially responsible for formation of rocks the magmatic rocks igneous rocks and uh, also the rocks which are, which are formed by the process of metamorphism in areas where active deformation is uh, going on with input of heat coming from different sources. Uh, the other broad, other broad earth process is the exogenic process, the exogenic process for which the energy is essentially provided by the sun. Now, as you could see in the diagram, the exogenic process means essentially means the weathering process, erosion, uh, transportation and deposition in sedimentary basins, normal weathering process or evaporation these kind of processes uh, they operate they do operate on the surface of the earth and the energy is provided by the sun. But as you could see in the diagram that the endogenic process and the exogenic process could possibly be correlated could could some relationship could be established between them because the weathering and erosion processes denudation processes will only will also be depending on the rate at which the uh, any part of the continental mass is rising and for, for example, so the relationship, so the scale of the operation of the two broad processes have to be understood. Uh, if we want to explain the distributional peculiarities or the distributional characteristics of these ore deposits, uh, as I told that there, there are some local scale manifestation of these broad uh, are processes which operate in a much larger scale. So, <coughs> uh, if we want to understand mineral deposits or deposit formation, it is very essential for us to uh, have a uh, this, this, this space means essentially we, we, in, we mean that the, uh, the earth, the, the continents, the surface of the earth as we see. Uh, and then we could just look at the distribution. So, here we have the uh, globe, the physical map of the earth with the present day distribution of the land and sea. We all know that the, the earth is covered 70 percent by water by the oceans and about 30 percent are available as continental mass for us. So, let us try to first look at the distributional peculiarities of metals just to bring out the fact that the distribution of different mineral resources are not just very uniform all across the 
uh, continents or like the surface of the earth that is all exposed to us. So, just I have taken the example a few example of one of the metals iron which is available in abundant quantity and is one of the important metallic resources for uh, steel and the infrastructure industry. So, let us look at this. Uh, this this is the superior province in North America, this is the Labrador Trough, this is in Brazil uh, quadrilateral Ferifero, this is the Damara belt in Namibia, this is the Barberton mountain range in South Africa, this is the, the two uh, areas that are shown two or three areas, the lower one is Tharwar Katon in India, the middle one is the uh, uh, central Indian sedimentary basin Boiladilla basin where we get iron, this is the Singhum Craton in India and this is the Hammersley basin in Australia. So, this the purpose of showing this is that what we get the iron ores present to us in billions of tons in quantity, they are distributed in only a few uh, local few localities on the on the in the continents. They are not just uh, this is the Krivoy Rog uh, iron in 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 uh, in Russia, and these are the ones which give the maximum major bulk of the production of iron in the world, uh, and sometimes uh, giving the quantity in very huge quantity which we call them a super large deposit. Similarly, let us look at the, the distributional peculiarities of metals based like copper, lead and zinc. This distribution is definitely not very exhaustive. I have only selected a few of them. This is the Chilean, this is the Andean mountain range in Chile and we get the maximum distribution of maximum, maximum frequency of occurrence of copper deposits here. This is in the uh, in, in the state of Quebec in Canada where we get the famous Noranda deposit which is copper. Here is the Zambian copper belt in Africa, here this is the Cyprus uh, Ophiolites belt in the middle uh, in, in part of the Alpine Himalayan chain. Here this is the Malanjkhand copper mine in India, Khetri copper mine in India and this and so on. If the lead, lead and zinc deposit which are marked as black, this is the famous Sullivan deposit in Canada, this is the Mississippi uh, region, uh, the famous Mississippi valley type deposit occurring in the state of Kentucky, Missouri here in North America. This is the Zawar, Rajpura, Dariba, the north northwestern India which have produced major quantity of lead and zinc in the Indian subcontinent and this is the Japanese island arc which also gives very rich lead and zinc deposit. There are many more deposits, but these are the significant ones in, uh, in the world which produce the maximum amount of the metals. So, here the intention is very clear just to show that the distribution of these deposits is so very non-uniform on the uh, across the continents in the world. Gold. So, this is the uh, Nevada state of Nevada in United States which is currently one of the very actively producing gold dip, gold uh, of the of the world. This is the Abitibi greenstone belt in Canada having very super large deposits of gold and this is the wheat water strand uh, gold uh, deposit. This is the Ghana in Africa, this is the Barberton mountain range uh, gold deposits and this is the one of the major gold producing areas in the world this is the Ilgan Craton in Australia, the famous Carl Gulli gold deposits and here also the Dharwar Craton deposits like Kolar and Hatti. So, it, we can always look at and visualize the distributional peculiarities of metals. Uh, this is the this is uranium, this is the famous Athabasca basin in Canada, this is Jacobina in Brazil, this is the uh, Witwater Strand basin also producing the uranium, this is the Olympic Dam deposit in Australia and this is the uh, Alligator River deposit, the famous Ram Jungle deposit, uranium deposit in 
uh, Australia. So, these constitute the major uh, sources, major resources of the metals where they, they produce bulk of the uranium of the world. And similarly, we can see the chromium, uh, this is the steel water complex, this is the Skiergard complex in, uh, uh, in Greenland, this is uh, the Boosbelt complex and the great, great dike of Zimbabwe and the Boosbelt complex and here the chromite deposits of India. We will be looking at the mineral uh, resources uh, in a greater details when we come to the individual deposit types. So, what we actually uh, we are observing here, this, di this diagram is just one such example that the percentage of gold total in ounce by region, this is Asia, this is whole of Africa, is just uh, this is the North America, South America, Australia. So, what we observe here is that the, <coughs> uh, the Australia the looking at the area of the of Australia, it contributes about 12 percent. Let us say take gold for example, we can take we can look at such examples or many more of such metals which are on great demand or are very useful for our industry and are economic very high economic value. So, a tiny Australian mainland is contributing about 12 percent of the total gold of the world whereas, the whole of Asia is only about 17 percent, Africa is 17 percent and the whole of Europe is contributing only 2 percent, America taken the North America is 34 percent and the South America is 17 percent. So, the thing which is pretty observable here is that the mineral deposits do have a very gross non-uniformity in their occurrences across the continents. And we will have to uh, see we, what exactly uh, how they can be rationalized, what how they can be understood uh, in the in the context of the broader earth process as we have defined as the exogenic and the endogenic processes. Look at this diagram which is again uh, one which was plotted where the total number of the mineral commodities that is produced in any of the country against their area area of the geographical area of the country and this uh, is, is a broad uh, band which is defined where it, it would look like the, the total mineral endowment is somewhat in proportion to the total geographical area of that country. Some of the countries which will be this, this diagram has been taken from the book of uh, Stephen Kessler. Uh, some of the countries would look as if their mineral endowment is uh, far far less than what would be expected from the geographical area and some of the mineral deposits uh, some of the countries will be producing lot more number of mineral commodities than what would be uh, uh, what would be expected from the total geographical area. So, here the, here the, pro the situation is that it is just not the geographical area it is definitely something more fundamental that is to be so, the mineral resource endowment, the number of deposits and the total quantity is not in proportion to area of any continent. And as we will also uh, see gradually the, that the identical geology uh, of a region or terrain does not guarantee equal mineral endowment. And in the present day context, mineral deposit occurrences seem to be controlled by global tectonic processes at diverse tectonic domain, which we will be uh, seeing. So, now uh, let us try to rationalize the occurrences distributional peculiarities of the mineral resources in relation to because the broad the, the, the earth processes in the broadest sense could be visualized through the present day global tectonics process. Here the different uh, plates are shown I will be very brief as I showed this is the Chilean Andes where most of the where it is the highest frequency of occurrence of the copper deposit. Also, the western part of North America which is the North American Cordillera and regions like this, this is the Papua New Guinea and some of the areas Philippines and so on. And uh, 
So, there is at least we could see a very clear cut correlability that the mineral deposit occurrences are controlled by the global tectonics process. Uh, when we see the process it is just not only so we are, so this is a subduction zone where a continent where a oceanic plate is subducting against a continental uh, uh, lithosphere where this is a con this is a continental arc these kind of uh, uh, domains con tectonic domain are more akin to uh, island arcs where like uh, the uh, deposits which uh, what exact type of deposits we will be discussing them uh, in due course in the lecture it is not only just the so uh, we can make a broad correlation with the endogenous process which basically is manifested in the global tectonics and uh, magmatic activity within the continents or magmatic activity on continental margins. We do also have some can draw some idea about the exogenous process, the exogenous process which are where we have the major river system like where we have the uh, in Africa or in South America where the major river systems are there and weathering erosion processes are taking place in uh, say for example, if we look at this diagram then the areas where the weathering and erosion processes is expected to be far uh, greater in extent or far faster. These are the areas where we have the present day mountain chains and we all know take the example of the Himalayan mountain chain and we have the erosion of the Himalayan mountain chain by the river system and deposition of the sediments in huge quantity in this Bay of Bengal in the form of Bengal fan. And there are many other such areas where we can correlate the exogenous process also uh, to and then uh, interesting and the another interesting process. So, here is a very schematic diagram of what happens in the uh, uh, with in respect to the uh, process that we have just seen this is a con this is a uh, continental arc akin to the Chilean Andes margin where we get deposits of copper and molybdenum. This is the continental interior where we can have magmatism in the form of ultramorphic uh, bodies giving rise to diamond deposit. We can have ultramorphic magmatism giving rise to chromium nickel deposit and here this is something which is very similar to what is happening in the alpine Himalayan mountain chain. There are uh, intense tectonic activity lots of uh, extra heat being generated through the frictional uh, through, uh, through the thrusting processes of the rock masses and small quantities of felsic melts being generated and there are chances of getting some uranium and thorium type of deposits which we saw they are the lithophile elements which uh, generally get enriched in crustal rocks and uh, also in the mid continent we have tin tungsten kind of deposits. So, and this is a situation which is corresponding to the mid uh, oceanic ridges where the structure is pretty much complicated with faulted and fractured giving rise to a fracture network and circulation of the uh, sea water and giving rise to deposits of copper lead zinc. We will see what exactly they are, what genetic category they belong to in due course of the lecture. And the mafic bodies which are emplaced at greater depths are also giving rise to chromium nickel and platinum group of metals. And so, these are the present day. So, we ask the question that whether mineral deposits are being are formed in the present day or not. So, these are some of the pictures which are taken from the mid uh, oceanic ridges like uh, like the mid Atlantic ridge or the East Pacific rise where we see that mineral deposit formation uh, is taking place at right this is point of time. These are features which are called in the sulphide chimney which are essentially deposition of the metal sulphides and these are the uh, features which are very popularly known as the black smokers consisting of very fine particles of sulphides which rise through the water column in the sea bot sea sorry, the bottom of the sea, sea sea floor. And this is a process of present day mineralization which is and the deposits that we uh, that we discussed about in occurring in the uh, Chilean Andes region are just about a few million years old. So, uh, uh, to sum up we do uh, have a uh, distributional peculiarity of these uh, resources of minerals of different metals and minerals and that distributional peculiarities could be very well explained based on the endogenic and exogenic processes that are operating in the interior of the earth as well as the surface of the earth. 
So, this much for today. We will continue in the next class. Thank you.